Thank you very much. Actually, so my name is Jean-François Abramatic. As uh, was just said, I uh, was uh, in the, between 1996 and 2001, I was the chairman of the World Wide Web Consortium. 1996, you may remember, that was really the early days of, uh, there was a company such as Netscape, maybe you remember that name. Uh, anyway, so uh, this were, these were the early days of the web. And uh, I had the chance, or the opportunity, I should say, uh, to um, organize uh, the work to lead the, the web to its full potential, as we were saying at the time. Uh, today, I will talk about what I see as another generation after the web has been a lot. So let's say, since we're on the Internet Forum, we start from the network and the TCP IP protocol, 70s, uh, the web, uh, 90s, uh, the data came from the XML standards and, uh, and now coming from the Internet of Things and all the ways to collect information uh, around the, the Internet. So we live in the world of uh, today of uh, the big data. Uh, now the question is to put all this infrastructure at the service of the citizens, at the service of people, of companies, and so on, we need to get to the next layer, right? The knowledge infrastructure. And uh, today I will not give a talk in a few minutes about knowledge infrastructure in general. I'll just focus on one piece of knowledge, which is software, source code, right? So you have, uh, I let uh, brochures at the entrance, and you, you have a brochure that explain the project uh, that present the project software heritage. So the project software heritage was launched by uh, INRIA, the National Institute for Research in Computer Science and Applied Mathematics, um, about two years ago. Uh, it became public uh, in June 2000 of uh, no, this year. So that's why I take this opportunity and thanks for the opportunity to presenting uh, software heritage to you. What does software heritage do? in this world of uh, building the knowledge infrastructure. It collects, preserves, and shares all software source code that is freely available. So I repeat, collect, preserve, and share all software source code that is freely available. So in the first two years of the projects, uh, the, which was launched by INRIA, so just the INRIA team, we had collected uh, all the software source code which is available on GitHub, uh, all the software source code which is available on Free Software Foundation, and so on and so on. So we reached a point, and you know that uh, on the internet, you do not create a new project just by doing slides or giving talks. You need to do things, right? So we decided to make it public at the point where we had sufficient critical mass that we could, uh, that we could claim that the project was feasible. So what is the, the okay, okay, so now you say, all right, I'm at the knowledge level, on the knowledge level, I'm focusing on source code. What is the benefit and for whom? So first of all, uh, software source code is the one and only one thing at the moment, which is understandable both by people and machines, right? Source code, people can write it, can read it and machines can inter interpret it and execute a uh, code. There are not a lot of information that are at that level today. Basically, at this moment, software source code is the only one. So, in the one hand, it, uh, it preserves uh, a part of uh, what mankind has produced, uh, knowledge that mankind has produced, uh, is embedded into source code, and uh, having this great library of code uh, that, that software heritage is providing uh, is is providing this library which exists for books, which exists now for videos, audios, and so forth. It uh, delivers that library for source code. The immediate benefit is for the industry itself, right? Because the industry will get access to the versioning of the source code, all the information that they need to deliver their own layer of, uh, of software on top of the, of the library. It has also impact in two other dimensions which are very important. First, science. 
most of, uh, I believe in one of the recent uh, articles by Nature, uh, it was claimed that more than twice, uh, more than half of the papers produced in Nature, in biology, physics, whatever topics it is, uh, were using software. Okay, so now if you want to reproduce science, you don't need only the equipment, the physics equipment or uh, the chemical equipment and so on. You need also software, right? And so you have the articles that the scientists produce, you have the data that they, that they use to, to, uh, to deliver their experiments, and there is source code. And there is no room at the moment to, uh, to preserve that source code. So that's one of the immediate impact of the software heritage project. And the final one, of course, is uh, I was asked, uh, you know, what is the first priority for the European Union in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, you know, developing a digital uh, world uh, in, uh, in Europe? I believe it's education. Right? Education at all levels, education for the citizens, education for professionals, education for experts, and we were talking before, the, uh, education for leaders, right? Uh, everybody, because of the evolution of the digital world, has to uh, learn, and will have to learn in their career as time goes by, you know, the new uh, capabilities that the digital world is providing. Back to software heritage, so uh, became public uh, in June 2016. Uh, at the moment, uh, is uh, driven by a team based at INRIA, but you will see in the brochure that we have uh, assembled a number of uh, uh, you know, organizations next to us. Microsoft was present at the, at the uh, opening uh, of the, the public, uh, making public the software heritage. You see GitHub, Nokia, and, and lots of others. So we are at the stage where uh, you know, the first partners uh, are assembled uh, in order to um, to put this project forward. And of course, we're looking for more. We're discussing with uh, UNESCO on the cultural part, and I'm discussing with you today uh, uh, at the European Parliament, as uh, we're looking forward, of course, to engage uh, into a worldwide adventure. And, uh, and of course, uh, being French, Europe uh, is the first uh, area where we want to assemble uh, partners to move on with this project. So thank you very much.